Hi everyone. It's been forever since I recorded anything. Anyway, I'm working on the Marianne Zimmer Bradley books. There's quite a few and I have most of them actually. Anyway, I'm reading the first one which is Dark Cover Landfall. Here's the cover. You can see this is a really old one. Uh, please excuse me if I stumble. The font is like six point. <laughs> so I tried to get it through um, Kindle, but they don't have it. Uh, it. It must be just so old they don't have it. So anyway, um, I'm starting out on page eight where we left off. Uh, the last sentence where we left off was maybe they'd get they'd even get to share some of the finder's fees which would go to improve the Cornish colony, where they'd be by then. And they'd all have something to talk about when they were old settlers in the Cornish colony 50 or 60 years from now. But if the ship never did get off the ground again? Hmm. Impossible. This wasn't a charted planet okayed for colonizing and already opened up. The Cornish colony, by Cornish Delta, was already the site of a flourishing mining settlement. There was a functioning spaceport, and a crew of engineers and technicians had been working there for 10 years preparing the planet for settlement and studying its ecology. You couldn't set down raw and un unhelped by technology on a completely unknown world. It couldn't be done. Anyway, that was someone else's job, and he'd better do his own now. He made all the observations he could, noted them in his pocket notebook, and packed up the tripod starting down the hill again. He moved easily through the rock-strewn slope, through the tough underbrush and trees, carrying his pack effortlessly in the light gravity. It was cleaner and easier than a hike on earth, and he cast a longing eye at the distant mountains. Maybe if their stay uh, stretched out more than a few days, he could be spared to take a brief climb into them. Rock samples and some geological notations should be worth something to Earth expeditionary, and it would be a lot better than a climbing trip on Earth where every national park from Yellowstone to Himalaya was choked with jet-borne, jet-brought tourists 300 days of the year. He supposed it was only fair to give everyone a chance the mountains, and certainly the slide walks and lifts installed to the top of Mount Rainier and Everest and Mount Whitney, had made it easier for old women and children to get up there and have a chance to see the scenery. But still, McCarran thought longingly, to climb an actual wild mountain, one with no slide walks and not even a single chairlift. He'd climbed on earth, but felt silly struggling up on a rock cliff when teenagers were soaring past June chairlifts on their effortless way to the top and giggling at the Anna and Macronis, who wanted to do it the hard way. Some of the nearer slopes were blackened with the scars of old forest fires, and he estimated that the clearing where the ship lay was second growth from some such fire a few years before. Lucky the ship's fire prevention systems had prevented any fire on impact, Otherwise, if anyone escaped alive, it might have been quite literally from a frying pan into a raging forest fire. They'd have to be careful in the woods. Earth people had lost their old woodcraft habits and might not be aware anymore of the, what forest fires could do. He made a mental note of it for his report. As he re-entered the area of the crash, his brief euphoria vanished. Inside the field hospital, through the semi-transparent plastic of the shelter material. He could see rows and rows of unconscious or semi-conscious bodies. A group of men were trimming branches from tree trunks, and an another small group was raising a dimaxion dome, the kind built on triangular bracings, which could be built in half a day. He began to wonder what the report machine, what report of the engineering crew had been. He could see a crew of machinists crawling around on the crumpled bracings of the starship, but it didn't look as if much had been accomplished. In fact, it didn't look very hopeful at all for getting away soon. 
As he passed the hospital, a young man in a stained and crumpled medic uniform came out and called, Rafe, the mate has said report to the first dome as soon as you get back. There's a meeting there and they want you. I'm going over there myself for a medic report. I'm the most senior man they can spare. He moved slowly beside McCarran. He was slight and small with brown hair, light brown hair, and a small curly beard, brown beard. And he looked weary as if he had had no sleep. McCarran asked hesitantly, uh, how are things going in the hospital? Well, no more deaths since midnight, and we've taken four more people off critical. There evidently wasn't a leak. There evidently wasn't a leak in the Mount Atomics after all. The girl from Com checked out with no radiation burns. The vomiting was evidently just a bad blow in the solar plexus. Thank God for small favors. If the uh, atomics had sprung a leak, we'd probably all be dead and another planet contaminated. Yeah, that MAM drive saved a lot of lives, McCarran said. You look awfully tired, Ewan. Have you had any sleep at all? Ewan Ross shook his head. No, but the old man's been generous with walker wakers, and I'm still racing my motors. About mid-afternoon, I'm probably going to crash, and I won't wake up for three days, but until then, I'm holding on. He hesitated, looking shyly at his friend, and said, I heard about Jenny Rafe. Tough luck. So many of the girls back in that area made it out. I was sure she was okay. So was I, and Karen drew a deep breath, felt the clean air like a great weight in his chest. I haven't seen Heather. Is she? Heather's okay. They drafted her for nursing duty. Not a scratch on her. I understand after this meeting they're going to post completed lists of the dead, the wounded, and survivors. What were you doing anyway? Del Rey told me he had sent you out, but I didn't know what for. Okay, we're going to stop there um, and hope that I figure out how to upload this. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll start next time on page 10 and uh, go from there. Thanks.